listen to you and I didn't know who you were, okay? And I just came to America and I've heard about this Trump guy and I've heard about the Biden guy. And I'm listening to you, I would say, that guy is angry at Trump for what reason? He's either envious of Trump, he's angry with him because he sounds personal. He doesn't sound like he's being reasonable. He sounds he's being personal when he's attacking Trump. And I, I think he loses credibility a little bit for taking the angle that he does. Because you're coming from a place of saying this guy got this much money and he became rich because of this and he's a loser, he's a this. The guy was on Oprah Winfrey, 1988. And Oprah Winfrey says, so hey, uh, you sound like somebody that's gonna, you've seen this, you sound like somebody that's gonna run for office one day. No, no. Well, do you have any plans? No, but if I ever did, I would win. Who the hell says that? That's like a Babe Ruth call. You know, when you say I'm gonna hit the home run, you point the finger and you hit it. His book crushed it. His show crushed it. He crushed it in New York going up against all these other guys. He's done good with women. He's done good with his kids. He became a president. I don't know, love him or hate him. I don't have a relationship with him. So there is not like a, I'm defending this guy. I'm doing it. We're in Florida because of DeSantis. We came here because all of a sudden DeSantis, I'm watching him market. I'm like, dude, you're not even out there doing your part marketing. Finally, he's getting to it and now everybody's asking a question that they shouldn't be asking you, which is what? Why are you so down on the polls? Can you make a comeback? You should have never allowed these people to ask that question if you would have played offense earlier. But when you see a winner and complicated individual, a misunderstood individual, I don't know how many people you're gonna put on the list as Trump. In, in the history of America, by the way, whether you love this guy or hate this guy, it's kind of tough to, you know, uh, demonize the guy's resume. And no, I know you like no, to do this, but no. it's kind of tough to do it. Not remotely tough. You think so? So, Pat, look, I'm giving you nuanced answers. I'm telling you that he's anti-establishment in some ways, sure. and that's part yeah. of his appeal. Right. I'm telling you he's good at marketing. And almost everything you're saying is he's good at marketing. He was good on TV. He was good at marketing his book. He went on Oprah. It's marketing, marketing, marketing. No, you said he wanted two things. And what I did is I showed his resume. That's more than two things. It's, it's a bunch of different things that he wanted. That was my defense to you saying he only wanted two things, right. not the marketing so, side. Pat, imagine, yeah. imagine mm -hmm. if your dad gave you $413 million. You Which know, we, don't, we don't know that's the number, but okay. you, you're saying $413 million. Yeah, New York million Times million. says this was $413 million. Well, New York million. Times also said science is- New York Whoa, 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 time out, time out, time out. Stop the freaking tape, I gotta chime in here. PBD gave a very passionate defense of Donald Trump listed all of his accomplishments. Sure, Trump's had failures, but he listed a ton of his accomplishments. And what does Sank the Jank do? Basically goes back and says, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna give you like some nuanced answers, okay? <laughs> nuanced, <laughs> nuanced. And then he goes, oh, let's go to the New York Times. Oh, there's a gospel right there, right? Oh, the, there's a political gospel that we should all be taken as a word, you know, from God, right? The political gospel, the New York Times, saying that he took $430 million. What is he talking about? Even if his dad gave him the money, whatever the amount was, did you see what he's done with it? He's at least a millionaire. He's at least doubled that money. And his kids... He has fantastic kids. None of them are in trouble. None of them are still, you know, selling laptops after they're, you know, hung over on heroin and drugs and whatever, hanging around with prostitutes. Nothing like that. So this is just incredible. All the time he's going, nuance answers. That's what I'll give you about Trump. Sure, I'll give you. He's a great marketer, but in everything else, he sucks. He's a He's a, he's a rotten, crappy businessman. Sink goes, I'm a better businessman than him. Oh, really? Where's your billion dollars, Sink? Where's your billion dollars? Anyways, folks, welcome one and all. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Nasser here, the host of the Dr. Nasser Shake Show, where I give you my political prescription for my political perspective. And you know what? That's what's on tap for today. You saw a little bit of it. Let's get back to some more of PBD interviewing Sank the Jank of the Young Jerks. I mean the Young Turks. And what he thinks about Donald Trump and everything else. Let's go that video one more time.
New York Times Orwell's. has also lied about me. I understand. Yeah. Okay, but but his dad was enormously wealthy. And There's gave no him question an about enormous it. fortune. Yeah, and which he lost four thirteen by today's standards, or what was it back then? What was the actual? Fourteen I million. It, I, is, is okay, the I thought it was like about. no, 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 no way. It's it's look. I forget. I think it's by today's standards, but I'm not positive. Yeah, it okay, could have been four. But it's not back fourteen then. to four hundred and thirteen. That's not how inflation works. So, but Pat, if they gave it to you. You'd probably be worth four billion by now. I don't know okay? about that. Come I don't on, know. No, it's such an enormous Cenk, advantage. Do you have kids? Jenk, do you have kids? Yes. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> let me let me unpack this for you. So, one of the hardest things to do is to be the pastor's kid. Are you are you kidding me? Like the pastor's kid is like. So you got to be a virgin till you get married. I'm going to go freaking smoke weed. Dude. I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of this pressure. Are you going to be this? No, I'm not, bro. I just, I remember we're at a church. We're going to the church. The pastor's son, you ready for this? This is a pastor loved by so many people. His son gets arrested across the street from the church with a crew of players taking stuff from Best Buy. And the pastor's going to come on Sunday and preach. In front of 20,000 members. So the point I'm trying to make to you is nobody wants to be Michael Jordan's kids. Nobody wants to be Brady's kid. The level of pressure and scrutiny of wanting to do that. So Trust true. Me, I understand so the level true. of uh, you know, uh, uh, influence and additional cards and stuff that you can get. But we did a, we did a, uh, a research on uh, uh, a generational wealth. I got kids and I'm trying to see how do I set it up for my kids to get my wealth without them being spoiled. Okay, So it's something that's yeah. important to me. I kind of want to figure out. I'm in a community, a couple families do it right. So I said, let me go on and study this to see how to do it right. Vanderbilt's, do you know how long the wealth lasted? This guy was the richest man in the world, giving money back to the country. You know how much, how, how many generations money lasted? Usually, two generations. It, usually it's always two the generations. Only gener the only wealth ge that lasted seven generations is the Medici. Medici lasted seven generations. It's the only one. Every other one is two, three. Rockefeller's still on four right now. They're not even on five, six, seven. So, so the notion when you're saying like, if you, you would have had a head start, Bro, a lot of people, you give them money, they become spoiled little brats. I had a guy I interviewed who lives in Seattle. You know what his job was? He managed the Templeton family, 16 grandkids. You know what his job was? His job was he was the guy dealing with billionaire families. And the reason why Seattle, you know why Seattle, Amazon, Microsoft, all those guys, all these, he's, there's all these billionaires and guys that are worth 100 million that no one knows who they are. He's worth 28 million, 148 million, 300 million. Yes, sir. They're kids, drug addicts. He says, my biggest job with these guys was to make sure they didn't do drugs. They didn't do alcohol. So, but the, you know what the biggest problem with me was? He says, what's that? They typically came to me too late. They came to me too late that I couldn't do anything about it. Dude, this guy's never drank alcohol. He's never done drugs. He doesn't do that. I mean, that kind of stuff to come from that amount of opportunity to screw up, dude, that's not easy to do. Six bankruptcies. I mean... That's, That's all, all he focuses on. Six bankruptcies. <laughs> six bankruptcies. Oh my God. What an unbelievable, evil, despicable, disgusting person Trump is. Yes. Not one, not two, not three, four, five, but he has six. Count them. Six bankruptcies. He could have had 60 bankruptcies for all I'm concerned. He, he comes, comes out of them, then that's when the laws are set up. You go bankrupt, you come back, you're back on your feet. And just because one business or something went bankrupt doesn't mean the others did. He's still got a massive fortune, a massive huge name, a massive following, which is something that Sank the Jank wishes that he had. Oh, Sank, if only you could have had one bankruptcy in your resume. But have, have the, the fame, fortune, and wealth, and the, the kind, kind of kids, kids that Trump has. I mean, <laughs> he has six bankruptcies. Come on, Pat. You, you gotta, gotta say, say that he's an evil, dishonest, lying, says OB. Just when you run, when you no look, people make mistakes in business. If you're not oh. making mistakes, you're not really a businessman. Like, there's no question. I get it, right? And I'd cut him a, a lot of. I'd cut any business person a lot of. He, he almost, almost said it for what you said because, because I, I cut, cut him. I mean, I, I cut, cut almost any businessman business except, except for Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Some, Some slack. Slack for you got a bankruptcy. You got two bankruptcies. It happens, brother. 
Six? Six. He's never had a successful business. Trump stakes, Trump water, Trump uh, it, it, casinos. You can't name a successful right. business. He, ran, he bought an airplane uh, company. Instant, he put gold seats in a in an economy uh, uh, airline and immediately went bankrupt. He's terrible at business. But look, if you say it's personal, well, number one, it isn't because I'm giving you nuance on both sides. Okay. Oh, oh there, there it is. is. It's, it's not, not personal. personal. Uh, it's, it's not, not personal. personal. I don't, I don't hate, hate the man. man. <laughs> but, but I'm going. I'm going to use the N word. I'm going to use the N-word, hey, folks. The N-word is going to be used, the political N-word, nuance. I'm going to give you some nuanced answers. That's, that's Sank the Jank's biggest thing. Nuance. Okay. But having said that, look, it got personal when he uh, lost the election in 2020 and said, ah, screw it, I'm gonna try a coup. I'm gonna do these fake elector scheme. I'm gonna try to <laughs> rob America of its democracy just so I can stay in power. Screw that guy. And if any of you are voting for that guy who's totally un-American, who betrayed this country, you're nuts and he won't ever leave office. He's a- This, this is what this guy, guy he's, he's absolutely, absolutely freaking, freaking unhinged. unhinged. He's, he's unhinged. unhinged. Trump is un-American. -American. Trump hates his country. Trump was trying to overthrow the government of the United States. Trump is a dictator. Trump is a fascist. Is this what this guy is trying to say? I mean, this is what, for three years, they were basically saying what? On MSNBC, even you guys at the Young Jerks, okay? Even you guys at the Young Jerk. Oh, my God. We're basically, you just dove head over heels. You were like... Deep, deep, deep. You were so far up the rectum with the Russia, Russia, Russia story. With the dossier. You guys were headlining that. You were taken for a chumps by Trump on that, folks. That's what you guys were doing. And now you got the temerity to come on here and basically say, oh, Trump is an American. Trump hates this country. Trump is a traitor. Trump's a sp That's what you guys are saying? You guys are all freaking You're nuts. You're absolutely freaking unhinged, said the Jake. Absolutely un freaking unhinged. Wanna be dictator? He always praises dictators, whether it's Xi in China, whether it's Kim Jong un in North Korea, Putin. He's always saying, Oh, they get all the applause when they walk in. No one is allowed to disagree with them. And then freedom, freedom my ass. He hates freedom. He wants to take away everyone's freedom. Has, Has he, he taken, taken away, away your freedom, freedom from speaking your, your big ass mouth, mouth right now on television? Has he, he taken, taken away any of your freedom, Sank? He, he wants to take, take away everybody's freedom. freedom. It's just amazing. It's amazing the stuff that comes out of your mouth. He wants to take away everyone's freedoms. Name one time when he ever did that. During his four years in office, everybody, three freaking years, 24 freaking seven. Everybody was attacking him. Him, his kids, his family, the presidency, every single freaking thing that he did, he was being attacked left and right. Up and down, 24-7, seven, seven days a week. What the hell are you talking about? You want to take away everybody's freaking freedoms. So that all the power goes to him, okay? So no, Pat, look, you see, you can not <laughs> Even the BBE's laughing at him. Oh, he's right, yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> Let's, Let's continue, continue with this. Even the PBD. I'm laughing at you. It's entertaining what you're saying. And, and, <laughs> and it's 100% true. I, I can't see you. Okay, so true. let me ask you a different question. Who do you trust more, him or Biden? I don't trust either one of them. It's okay, not about trust. Fair. Okay, so, so, so who, do you, who do you see more? If your choices are the two guys right now, are you going to sit this one out? Oh, no way. I'm going to vote Biden. Because, okay, so, <laughs> because I want another election. Oh, no way. I don't, I don't trust, trust any of them, them but I'm going to vote Biden. If you'd be, you would be intellectually more honest, okay? Intellectually more honest by saying you're going to sit it out. But no. But no. They're both dishonest. You can't stand either of them. You don't trust any of them. But, 
politics behind Biden over Trump. Trump. Being very intellect, you're so intellectually honest, sir. Thank you, Jen. So intellectually honest. Election. I don't want. I don't. Okay. If you put Trump back in yeah. charge, there's at least a fifty percent chance we're oh never going to have so, so let me ask you this other oh question. Oh my to, God. To the people. Did, did you just hear that? What he just said. Fifty percent chance. Oh, you know what? There's a fifty percent chance that tomorrow is going to be. You know, it's going to rain. There's a fifty percent chance that I think tomorrow is going to snow. Fifty-fifty. It may or may not. Oh, there's a 50% chance or greater that if Trump gets into the office again, he's never going to leave the presidency. He's going to be there for the next 20 years, 30 years, until he passes away. He's going to be there. I mean, do you realize how any, you know what, simmer. That's what you're doing. You're just simmering. You're stewing over there. S-I-M-R, Sancta Jank. S-I-M-R. Sancta Jank. Stupid. Idiotic, moronic, retarded. That's their acronym that should be pasted across your forehead. When Hillary lost, you've seen that clip when Hillary lost. It's the it's one of the greatest. Uh, com- Bill Burr said it best. Oh, loved it. Love Obama. that says, clip. Man, forget Love about that clip. The, the uh, Olympics, Russia, U.S., forget about, you know, the home run, forget about this. He says, dude, this guy beat Hillary Clinton. It's like the Crush people it. lost their minds, Crush right? It. What did Hillary Clinton do for four years? You know what she did. She went around campaigning around what? Russia they stole the election. They stole the election. They stole the election. They, and we... What do you mean before, Pat? Before she was doing it with all that bullshit. Yeah. But no, it, but they didn't say that she, he physically stole the election. There's a giant, giant difference. Saying, oh... Oh, no, no, they didn't say you were Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? They said he was in bed with Russia, that he was a Manchurian candidate, that Russia rigged the election, that they went into these small little towns and they did something with the voting machines. They were on Facebook advertising saying, oh, you know, vote for Trump, don't vote for Hillary. <laughs> They were talking about that the steel dossier came out. The Dur- what are you talking about? Oh, it was totally different. She just said that, you know, she was just crying a little bit. That's all she was just doing. It wasn't the same, not the same level. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boo-hoo, which she did. Of like, oh, Ma, the Russians in, in, interfered in the election, which, by the way, they did, but not enough to make the difference, okay? But that's just crying after your loss. What? Whereas Donald mm-hmm. Trump, no, said, had a scheme of fake oh. electors yeah. to fake do a goddamn okay. coup. So I got a follow-up yeah. Hillary did not and do she that. Did I can see Hillary. And she did oh, actually oh, concede. Wait, wait, hold on. Well, you heard it from the horse's mouth, the horse's patoot. The bloviating buffoon sank the jank of the young Turks. I mean, the young Turks. You heard his comments, his reactions. You heard PBD. Mine. Love to know what your comments are. Put them down below. We're getting a lot of people from the left. A lot of leftists. A lot of liberals. A lot of you lovable lunatic leftists out there. Progressives. Commenting. Basically saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. I love it! I love it! Keep it coming! Keep it coming! Absolutely! Let's see what you got, all right? I'll show you what I got. Let's see what you got. Anyways, thanks for taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm the host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, comment, like, share below, follow us. Love if we do that. Take a look at our links above and below. Final thought, like I've always said, when you're right, you're right. When you're left, you're just wrong. Anyways, folks, take care. Until next time, stay safe.